I do want you to basically take your job title. And instead of saying, it's Joe, instead say, it's the director of operations making this video. And watch how big of a difference that makes for you. So, hey everyone, welcome to another episode of FI Today, the podcast where we talk about all things banks, credit unions, payments, and more. Uh, my name is Kevin Miyamoto, co-founder, COO of Identify, also known as Moto. Hello, Moto. And we have a very, very special guest for you all today. The Payments Professor is joining us on the podcast. Payments Professor, what's going on? How you doing, man? I am absolutely fabulous. Got to give my signature. Hey, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> and so before we dive into this episode, and we're going to be talking about the psychology behind the learning. It's going to be a really fascinating uh, podcast for you all today. But before we jump in, um, Kevin, why don't you just give us a little bit of background of, you know, who you are, what you're up to today, and then I'd love to hear a little bit more about that master's program that you just recently completed. All right. So we're going to be doing this podcast probably in two parts. One part is just who I am and what I do. So I am known as the payments professor. I actually am also the senior vice president of strategy and innovation for a company called Pigeon, which is a faster payment solution provider. I've been working in the banking industry for over a couple of decades now. I started off in the world of ACH when it was installed on a Windows machine, you know, early days of internet type stuff. Oh, Windows 95, just to give you guys an idea, 98. I knew how to support that type of stuff. Even got my first degree in computers. Flippy. And, yeah, right? And, yep. and it's useless now, but it was great experience then. And I quickly ended up in the education department because doing all that tech support, working with people and understanding the computer side of things, I would sit there and I, I would read these technical documents and it suddenly made sense. And all of a sudden the people are like, hey, could you start training people on how to do this? And I'm like, well, sure, I guess so. And I did that too, because I don't know about you, but training used to be painful. I mean, like I remember my first day on my first job working for a FinTech, they gave me the ACH rules book and sent me home. And I went home and I wanted, well, okay, I did cry a little because I'm like, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm going to lose my job. Let's be honest, Kevin. It was a lot of crying. There was a lot yeah, of There was crying. a lot of crying. Yeah. In fact, I even, I was married at the time and, and my, my ex, she came in and she's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I can't do this. This is the, I've never, this is worse than, you know, Russian mixed with Spanish and, you know, a little Martian tossed in and I'm supposed to understand it. Well, anyway, it suddenly did start to make sense because I had some great mentors in the industry and I ended up in the education field. I worked for the regulatory side of things. I've worked for some of the nonprofit payment association world side of things. And then I ended up back in the fintech world. And when I came back into the fintech world, I said, hey, I'll come work for you guys, but I want you to know I've got a passion and I've got a desire to really help people learn this electronic payment stuff. And I really work hard to simplify it. And that's when the payments professor was really born. It's like, okay, let's make this happen to where people can learn electronic payments and let's do it to where it's engaging and it's fun too. Well, yeah. And that was the, one of the first things that stuck out when I first met you, Kevin, it's, you know, you see around different industry events, people are talking about ACH 101, CCD, PP. It's like, come on, let's, let's bring, let's bring some life into it. Let's make it relatable. Right. right. Um, it, I mean, it these... is. It's Bueller, PP, yeah, exactly. Bueller, CCD. Exactly, or, or, exactly. The part that it kills me is they'll put a slide on the screen for you, right? And then they'll look at it and they'll read it word for, and they'll read it word for word and tell you everything that's on the slide and then go, any questions, next slide. And I mean, it's, oh, it's I maddening. Know. Well, not only that, and then you're in the audience and you're like, oh, shoot, this presenter speaks like a robot. And then you look to the bottom right corner of the, of the PowerPoint, it's page two of 51, and you're like, Oh my God, no, like, please, please, no, please. Yeah. And so, you see people dozing off, falling asleep and it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so, so yeah, so the, so then, you know, I know, um, your, your other role, but then you also have the payments professor. So, um, do you, do you find yourself, you're, I mean, I seen you at a, a bunch of different conferences right now. So I'm assuming the payments professor also has a bunch of resources out there for, FIs uh, to, to really get engaged with and really start to learn about all things payments. 
Well, and that's exactly what I try to do is, you know, as the Payments Professor, it's a brand that I built. There's the Payments Professor website. There's the Payments Professor YouTube channel. I've even gone to Instagram. Funny thing, if people who really know me know I'm not really good at social media. I don't do the social media thing. So to start doing that, it's really because of the love I have for helping people to be able to learn all this stuff. In fact, Kevin, this is how crazy I am. You know this. During the pandemic, I went back to school. I went back to school specifically to figure out how can I do this better. And what I did is I went back and I got an, an, a degree, a psychology degree, my master's actually, in industrial organizational psychology, which is a field of psychology that takes you know everything that we've learned in classic psychology that helps to help people, to motivate people, to really straighten out their lives. And it applies it to the world of industrial organizational or the, let's call it the workplace. And what I was able to do through this series of classes that I took is find ways to improve education, especially, um, believe it or not, I even wrote presentations and papers on taking Fed now and improving the education on it, did the research on it, and finding ways to be able to help motivate people so that they want to learn this, so that they're, they show up and are like, yeah, Fed now. That's a challenge. But that's what I focused on in this degree and in this program because there's so much research. There's so many resources actually that are out there that they're just not being used. And as one who's done it for years, that classic way of teaching and just reading the slides, it just doesn't work as effectively as a lot of the newer options that are out there. Yeah, so let's dive into that a little bit. I mean, you've, you've obviously done a ton of research around this. What what are some of the stats and studies that you've read about or, or, or learned about that that you think applies to banking and just organizations out there today? Well, a lot of it, believe it or not, is it's already out there in our faces. And we just need to take what we're already doing and apply it to the banking industry. Like one of the first things is YouTube. YouTube is primarily short videos that are singular focused, you know, one topic, one video that just help explain. They give pictures. Uh, in my case, I use humor. They have animations. They have the sounds that even go along with it. So it keeps you engaged in learning it. And plus it's short and it's short. So you're able to absorb that singular topic. It's online. So you're able to go get it at any time and you can rewatch it and you can rewatch it and you can rewatch it and you can rewatch it. Oh, I got, sorry. I get stuck in a loop there on rewatching things until you finally understand it. Now that's actually a concept called chunking. When you take these complicated... Is it chunking? Chunking? Chunking. Yeah. <laughs> chunking. All right. Chunking is when you take basically something that's big and massive and it's, it's too much to absorb all of it at once. Like for example, the ACH rules. First time I was handed that book, it was too much for me to absorb. But if you break it down into smaller chunks, like we've all heard, how do you eat an elephant? With A1, hopefully. But one bite at a time is, you know, the key to it. You just, you break it down into smaller pieces. And with a YouTube style focus on going to the smaller, really the videos too, because people want to see things. People want to hear things. People want to be engaged. Taking the aspects of the, the sound editing. Sound editing is like something blew my mind. I didn't know actually existed. That you when you go through, it's not just taking the voice that you hear, but it's putting in the background noises. It's, you know, having the whoosh or having the birds flying or something like that. It enhances the experience. It keeps the mind engaged. The more engaged somebody is, the more they're going to pay attention, the more they're going to absorb it. Now, one of the things I do to add to chunking is humor is a big part of who I am. And Kevin, you can attest, I'm like this all the time. You, you know, are. People meet me and see me online and they're like, you're not really like that, are you? And I'm like, wait five minutes and you'll understand. I, I, I'm really passionate about this. You know, I get told all the time, you're a funny person. I'm like, I'm just weird. But it comes out as being funny. Well, people learn in two states the best, at least. Number one is fear. Stop and think about it. The scaredest you've ever been. If I ask you, you know, when were you the most scared in your life? You can stop and you can pinpoint that moment. I'm like, what did you learn from that moment? And you're going to be able to list some things out. Don't walk down that alley ever again, you know, or she broke my heart. I am yeah, never going to do This, like this is again. the weather out that day and it smelled like this in the air. Yeah, for, wow. absolutely. You can put yourself back there. Well, the other side of that is humor. The other side of that is being able to laugh. 
and be able to be engaged. Like I'll bet too, if I ask you, hey, who's your favorite speakers when you do go to all these conferences, I'll bet you'll say they're funny. I'll bet you say they, they also do something called storytelling too, that they bring you into what they're talking about because they can tell you the story about like, for example, like you just said, I, it was this day I, I, I was, you know, I just started working in electronic payments. I'm in a small town in Georgia, one of those with just a single stoplight. And it's just back in what we call the mole holes. It was quiet. It was dark even. And they walk in and I can almost hear my boss, boom, 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 walking down the hall. And then he slams the ACH rules on my desk. And I look at this and I'm like, what is this? And he goes, your homework assignment. And to me, it was the end of the world. Have you been there? Have you done that? But you see what I mean? That storytelling concept. Absolutely. It helps. And yeah. bringing in that humor, it really helps. Breaking things into smaller chunks, it really helps. The ability to be able to rewatch, I call it rewatch, revisit, relearn at any time, it also helps people. But there's yeah, more. Yeah, and I guess, I guess, you know, as, you, as you're thinking about this too, because I know also you've consulted with, lots of different payment associations, lots of different banks and credit unions, you know, are they doing a good job of, of storytelling and, you know, effectively teaching today? W where do you think some of those challenges are? Well, okay, I, I got to be careful because these are my friends, you know, out there in the industry. And I would say most are actually doing a very good job. And a lot of it comes down to, you know, when I look at the professional development side, which is something also I'm really big into. I, I coach people, help them to be able to, you know, improve their careers, get to executive management levels, that type of stuff. And I'll tell them, if you really want to bring value to an organization, you got to stop and make yourself a better tool. You've got to be able, and you know, tool in a good sense of you bring good things. I, I, I got to be careful. I say that, you know, the younger crowds and they're like, tool's not good. Oh, man. he's you a tool. No, not, I know you yeah. didn't mean that. <laughs> and I mean, me growing up, a tool was a band that was just awesome. But, you know, here you got to be an accessory, let's say, to the organization. So I'll ask them, if you're a speaker, have you learned to be a better speaker? My, me specifically, believe it or not, I used to be terrible on stage. I didn't know how to fluctuate my voice. I didn't know how to have inflection. I didn't know how to bring the humor. I didn't know what to do with my hands. I had Ricky Bobby syndrome. I mean, you got to learn how to work with all those things. Toastmasters, great place to go. There's a guy on the internet, Roger Love. I've been through his courses. Oh my gosh, amazing of what you can do to take this, this voice of yours, and really use it more effectively to be able to help people. And I say that because some of the associations that I've worked with, they have their employees do that, or their employees have taken it on themselves to do that, to join organizations like Toastmasters, or they look at what they can do when it comes to the presentations themselves. Because uh, with PowerPoints, one thing that kills me is you ever heard the term slide you mint? And, and a slide you mint is basically this, it's when you take a PowerPoint slide and you put as many words as possible on that slide as you can and you just turned it into a document and people can't read that slide I love that yeah, slide <laughs> you it's, it, it's a slide that's been turned into a document the real thing that you should be doing and I've done a lot of research on this too there's some great books that are out there some great courses to where you can take and make better PowerPoints your PowerPoints should be short bullets just something to be able to jog the memory or to entice the person that's watching to want to hear what you've got to say that's going to add to it. Pictures are one of the best things you can do. Having images that are there that is going to enforce the message that you have to help people to be able to make what we call associations. When I can associate that picture with that bullet, with your story or your humor, I can really lock that in to my deeper, longer term memories. And then suddenly it makes sense. Yeah. One of the other things that we always think about is kind of the emotional play too. So from mm -hmm. the pictures, from the videos, from what you're saying, can you get some type of emotion out of it? Because to your point, it just, it's just more memorable as opposed to another boring PowerPoint or slide, slide, mm -hmm. slide, slide, I'll say, or I, I forgot how you said it, where it's just mostly text, vanilla, same thing over and over. We, you need to kind of change it up and, and bring some, emotion out of it, we think as well. 
I, I gotta agree. And I'll, I, you may have heard the term death by PowerPoint. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and that is when you have somebody who's got the slide you meant. That is when, like you mentioned too, we're going to have a 30 minute session, but I got 168 slides to be able to go through. Yeah. Uh, you know, on that note too, when somebody's got a lot of slides, I have learned this from years of doing this. First of all, you're never going to make everybody in the audience happy. Okay. No, it doesn't matter who you are. There's always somebody. And it's usually not your fault. They're just having a bad day. And I say that because you really don't have to go through all the slides. If your goal is to go through all the slides, please get off the stage. I'm, <laughs> and I mean that. Because your goal should be to serve the people that are there. Your goal should be to deliver the message that they need to hear. And, you know, I speak over and over again weekly, especially during the conference season. At, and I can take a group of slides and I'll present them one way to one organization, but the, you know, Data will change. Information will change in the next week or two. And I'll take the same presentation, and maybe it's in a different region in the country, and I will change and adapt that message. And in some cases, let's say i got 30 slides. I might make it through 20. And in some cases, I may make it through all 30. And people are like, well, what determines that? And what determines that is the group that I'm presenting to. It's making sure that when you're out there and you're presenting, because when you're live, I mean, you can't do this on video, of course, but when you're live, making sure that you're reading your audience. If they ask questions, somebody asked me a question. I know that other people have that question too. And if it means I need to redirect where this message is going, redirect what I planned to present, then that's going to happen because it's not about me getting through all the slides. It's about making sure that they get the message that they're looking for. Yeah, and, and absolutely. And one, one of the things that I, I forgot to bring up a, a few moments ago, though, Kevin, is the presentation styles. You know, I, it's not like you just are winging this. This is hours and hours and hours of practice and memorization for you to pull it off and make it seem natural. So I think that's another good point, too, you know, for a lot of uh, FIs that we work with. And I agree. A lot of them have the, the right mindset and approach, just maybe the execution isn't there. But and, and some of them get discouraged when they start to, you know, go on camera and they start to film themselves. Well, you know, you're you're a you know professional speaker and presenter. You're not just winging it. You're memorizing these presentations. You're practicing it over and over and over again to make it seem natural. And so for those FIs listening today, you know, practice makes perfect. That, I mean, that's that's a thing. And so really, if you're going to be presenting it and you want yourself to look and, and act a certain way and, and how you're presenting, you, you have to put in the work and practice. I think that goes without saying. Oh, without a doubt. And, you know, you actually mentioned one of the key things that will help any speaker get better. Anybody, okay, even if you're not a professional speaker, but let's say you've got to give a presentation. You want to be able to do that presentation better? I'll tell you one of my biggest secrets. It's called hit record. It's pull out your phone, if you got a camera, whatever it is, and record yourself. You don't even have to get good quality at all. You don't even have to even get the video. You gotta at least get the audio though. A lot of people say, I can't stand looking at myself. I'll let you in on a secret about that in a second, but you've gotta stop and you've gotta be able to record because if you record, then you see and you hear what's really coming out. And I have worked with people that have done this and they'll watch it and they'll go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I do that. And it's oh, amazing it because suddenly then the next time they don't do whatever that was like, um, or awe or sit there and scratch themselves in weird ways. Well, that's think, think about it this way. You know, this is a, a fairly new podcast. I watched myself from the first couple of episodes and I'm like, oh my gosh, Kevin, what are you doing? You're talking in a million miles an hour. You have weird hand play. You know what I mean? So even just in a couple recordings and we've only done 10 episodes or so at this point, I have noticed a big improvement. It's only been 10 times. I mean, I imagine... For you, because you've been doing this for so long, if you compare where you are today versus where you were at the start of this whole payments professor journey, I mean, the res the end product is it's just complete night and day, right? I mean, you're so much better now than you were when you first started because you've had all those reps. Uh, my business partner, who's my videographer too, he loves to pull up the old stuff. He loves to go, look at this. This was you look three how bad this years was. ago. He's like, look how far you've actually come. Now, don't get too big of an ego because you need to still get better. But there is something about when you see it, your subconscious, what actually happens is it picks it up. When you can see it, when you become aware of it, 
and you accept. I mean, these are, you know, some of the things that go into the addiction correction, believe it or not, is you've got to first be aware. You got to then be able to accept that you are actually doing it. And then you can take action. When you have that awareness, when you know that you're actually doing it, your subconscious actually helps you to take action. If you make a plan for how can I not do that? Like for example, people who do, I mean, it's really, there are people who can't help but touch themselves in weird ways. I'll, I used to for a, a long time wear long bracelets because I could sit there like this with the bracelet balls at the bottom of it in my hand. And, and I kid you not, people didn't realize, but I was doing that to keep myself from doing things like this. And there's little tricks like that that you can pick up that will help you to become a better speaker. Absolutely. And so, you know, w with that, uh, Kevin, I mean, we know that banks and credit unions have the right intentions. Execution can be challenging. We know that sometimes it gets a little wordy, let's say, with the training approach, right? So what are some things, and again, from take on that kind of psychology lens, right? What are some things from a psychology academic perspective that FIs can do today and um, start to implement right away that will have big impact on how they train the rest of their team. A lot of it is going to the shorter video format. Believe it or not, I was at a conference earlier this year where somebody spoke up and said, that doesn't work for my team. And I'm in the back dying going, I got to Wait, hold on, what, wow. the short video format? Yes. Hmm. I was blown away and it was all I could do not to, you know, squeak or yell or scream during the middle of this person's presentation, but I had to just, you know, let them speak because that's their experience. And what made it made me think is go, okay, just saying here's a short video is not the answer. It's a start. First yep. of all, what's in that video? How was it created? How's it being presented? Is it taking those aspects that we mentioned? Is there sound? Is there images? Is there engagement of some level? Or is it just a recorded is it, is slide? Is the speaker talking yeah. this slowly yeah. and like this low? Or is he talking this fast? Lots of things. To totally agree. Okay. And then next, motivation. That's got to come into play somewhere too. People just say, you have to watch this. Growing up, how many of you, when you were told you have to do this, went, whatever, uh, no, no, I don't want to. Oh, all the t even today, all the time. Like, you have to do this. Uh, well, do I? Like, do I? <laughs> but what if we turn it around and help people find a reason of why they're watching it? What if you take it and then just go, we've got these series of short videos. And by going through this, what it's going to do is it's going to help you to understand this new payment channel better. By your understanding this new payment channel better, our institution, our bank, our credit union is going to now be able to offer new services to our account holders. Our account holders are now going to be in situations where maybe they've suffered emergencies before that, you know, they couldn't get money moved over and it caused them to have losses and we made them maybe even change their account to somewhere else. We'll be able to eliminate that. We'll be able to take and offer a new product, a new service that's going to help our account holders, help our organization, and help you. But to do that, you need to go through this video series. Yeah. Wait a minute. You just helped me to see what it's called self-efficacy. When I can see and believe that it's got a bigger purpose, that I can see and believe that it's going to help me get through there. When I uh, And there's another theory called self-determination theory. You can pull in aspects of it. When, when I can pull in the cognitive and the emotional side of things, People become more motivated. They become actually more determined to want to be able to get this accomplished. If you put in additional uh, incentives too, watch it by this time, you know, your, your uh, department gets a pizza party, something like that. Your engagement levels will soar. But if it is not a quality product to begin with, believe it or not, adding those things can even take that non-quality product and still have a higher level of retention and uh information being absorbed yeah no no absolutely and uh if, if only there were a place or a professor we could go to for really short payment related training is there is there a resource out there I, uh, there's one on instagram there's one on youtube <laughs> and there's the paymentsprofessor.com to begin with as well also i tell people a lot of the payment associations like i got a name drop a couple of them epay resources sfe epcor 
payments first. I have done work with these organizations to be able to take all of the courses that I've created, uh, or at least some of them, depending on the organization, to offer them an avenue to be able to provide that themselves. I have found it, I can reach more people that way. And again, my passion is to help everyone be able to learn this. I would love to be able to retire off it one day, but hey, that ain't here yet. But yeah. if I can help, the more people I help, the closer I get to that. So there is the Payments Professor website, but there's also many organizations that are um, in a way resellers or selling this or providing it as a member benefit. It may be something you already have to, if you're a member of one of those associations that is available to you. Well, great. Well, hey, Payments Professor, thank you so much for your time today. I, got, really wait, wait, I, I promise one thing. I got, oh, I got go for it. Tell it. Because otherwise, you know, I'm so used to these mental lists. I'm not going to tell you how I make my mental list to memorize a presentation, but I did uh, do this little trick. And I said, there's a little trick that will help you be able to watch every video you create. And it'll help you feel more comfortable on stage. For example, the payments professor makes videos. The payments professor gets on stage. Kevin, not so much. Kevin doesn't like to be on video. The payments professor loves video. What you do is you create an alternate persona. So all of you are out there going, so I got to come up with a name like payments professor? No, please don't. I like my name. All right. But I do want you to basically take your job title. And instead of saying, it's Joe, instead say, it's the director of operations making this video. And watch how big of a difference that makes for you. All right. That's a great, I like that tactic. That's good. It almost... It almost separates the personas a little bit. So maybe folks who aren't as comfortable on stage become more comfortable because they're that alternate. I, I think of the uh, the example, I remember Brian Dawkins, who was a safety for the Eagles for a long time, pretty soft-spoken, well-liked guy. And before games, he imagined himself as Wolverine. And so that's why there are always all these pictures of him acting as Wolverine because during the game, he he had to kind of create and go into that alter ego to, to really get his game on. And so... Um, it makes complete sense now that now that you put it out there. So, it's one of my most powerful secrets. Yeah, yeah. Any other um, uh, last words or bit of advice for these FIs out here uh, looking to kind of up their game around training, Kevin? Start looking at what the newer generations, especially, are looking for, and I'm telling you, it's the YouTube style. The old ways, they may have worked for us, but we've got to let go of the old ways and we got to find new ingenious ways to do it. The short video style, it allows them to be able to not have to, you know, take a whole huge time commitment out of their day and be able to just in small chunks through a longer period of time, absorb information in the smaller pieces and truly learn it instead of just being presented with it. Absolutely. Well, hey, Kevin, uh, Payments Professor, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. And for those listening at home, we'll see you on the next one.